I know it's going to sound weird hearing me say this, but I'm actually disappointed in Joe Rogan. I really, really am. And listen, the bar was already really, really low. Now, for those that don't know, Joe Rogan is, and I don't know how you wouldn't know, the biggest podcast host in the world, period. He just is. There is no ifs, ands, or buts about it. He just simply is. And so he's got a lot of influence. And when he says something, especially when it's misinformation and it ends up spreading because of him, entire massive news outlets will cover it quite a lot because of how serious him saying something is. He's up there as one of the most influential people in the world as it stands. Now, to be fair, I've seen some stuff, not necessarily from Joe Rogan, but from his podcast, that I actually kind of liked. He's actually brought on a couple physicists, like, not fake, like, transphobic right-wing scientists like he does whenever he, uh, he does, like, a transphobic segment. I mean, like, it's him high as fuck on weed asking Neil deGrasse Tyson about how the universe works. And it's like, I have negative feelings towards both those people, but that's an interaction that is objectively hilarious, okay? High as fuck Joe Rogan asking basic science questions to Neil deGrasse Tyson. Neil deGrasse Tyson ans answering them, and then uh, Joe Rogan just sitting there like, soying at every single response will never not be good content, okay? It's just how it is. But when it comes to his politics, there have been some pretty massive fumbles, particularly when it comes to trans rights. Joe Rogan has had some serious, seriously transphobic takes, and he has supported some seriously transphobic misinformation and seriously transphobic misinformation spreaders. Most notably, he's platformed Ben Shapiro, Jordan Peterson, and Matt Walsh to talk about this stuff. But when he had on Matt Walsh, something happened that surprised me and a lot of the left. And it actually raised the bar for me when it comes to Joe Rogan. It actually impressed me enough to make me think maybe he's kind of on the path towards a slightly more reasonable, less amenable to far-right conspiracy theories being spread in his platform position. But, well, let's, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's watch this clip barely exist anymore because they've all become transgender they've they've all that's this is what they do now there, there, there are a lot of uh there are a lot of people doctors who got into the medical field and they did a certain thing and then the transgender stuff came along and that's and that's their whole that's what they do well it's the same for a lot of plastic surgeons that this is this is basically their whole business now is doing the gender surgeries um and so you see the incentive for them i mean they've they've they have staked everything on this they've also staked their professional reputation because that's the other problem. Not only is it the political incentive and the money, but if they admit that they're wrong, then they're also admitting that they have horribly disfigured and abused thousands, maybe millions of kids. How many people have had this done? Depends on what. I don't Here think we comes. have exact numbers, but it's if we're talking about the drugs, it's, I mean, millions. Um, Are you talking uh, about hormone blockers? Yeah. Uh, millions of kids have been on hormone blockers? Really? Uh Millions. I'm sure someone's going to fact check me on me, but my 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 guess is that we're in we're into the millions. You now. could tell he started sweating the second Joe Rogan questioned that massive number. He really hoped Joe Rogan would just roll with it, and you could see how much he like you could see the glint of how much he started sweating, and and just started stuttering like uh, I'll probably get fact check on this, but as far as I know, but listen how confidently he says millions here. I'm sure someone's going to fact check me on me, but my it's I mean millions. Um, I, I mean, millions. Are you talking uh, about hormones? He says it as, like, casually as you say, uh, the sky is blue. On blockers. Yeah. Uh, millions of kids have been on hormone blockers? Really? Uh, I, I'm sure someone's going to fact check me on me. But my, my, my guess is that we're, in, we're into the millions now at this point. Yeah, that would be my guess. Um, uh, I, I can say for double mastectomies, the most re I read a report recently that... Um, there were over a thousand done between 2016 and 2019, and when you compare that to how many were done between you know 
2008 and 2015, it's just a, it's a map. A thousand is a minuscule number to happen in like three years or four years, sorry. And on top of that, like just like with left-handedness becoming more common statistically as schools stopped punishing kids for being left-handed, the same has happened with gay people and the same is happening with trans people. More trans people are going to be publicly out and existing as society broadly gets more accepting of them. They've always exist, they just existed in the closet. They hid it. They kept it to themselves, much like gay people did. And the same phenomenon is just happening again, and they're trying to confuse the situation. But this is nothing new. This is nothing new. I'll let the video play. Massive increase. And uh, a th over a thousand girls had double mis gender, gender affirming double mastectomies in that in that time frame. And when and, you say that's, girls, that's, you're talking about prepubescent, right? Minors. Uh, and that's just up until 2019. And then we know that uh, there's been this exponential increase with all this stuff year over year. Also, minor counts 16 and 17 year olds. Like, call me crazy. I think 16 and 17 is old enough to get at least hormones. I'd argue there, like, you could make the case for irreversible surgeries as well, because I really don't see 16 or 17-year-olds being, like, under the false pretense of believing that they have gender dysphoria, like, falsely. I just don't see that as being a, a common thing. Like, we already have. I found out recently many doctors, at least in the USA, require up to three or more, three or more confirmations from sep separate doctors confirming that you have gender dysphoria before they'll agree to put you through treatment for even, like, hormone blockers. That's ridiculous. They don't make you get three second opinions on, like, the tumor in your kidney before you're allowed to get it out. It's only because of how politicized this issue has been. I get the idea of wanting to have safeguards because, you know, we talked about this before. It is possible for if somehow a cis person slipped through the system and, and ended up getting uh, gender affirming care and regretting it, they would have dysphoria. But the solution to that is for them to also then still have access to gender reaffirming care for them to transition back, which means the solution... So the problem is more gender reaffirming care. I don't know. Um, these people are completely dishonest, and all the data shows that the more access that people have to doctors and gender affirming care clinics and all these things, the lower the rate of uh, uh, regret as well. Uh, the, the lower the rate of detransition, too. Obviously, the majority of detransitioners don't detransition because they regret or it was a mistake. They detransition because A, they ran out of money to pay for their treatment, B, they have, at worst, a extremely hostile environment, at best, an unsupportive environment um, that for their, like, transition and their life. And so they end up just going back into the closet and detransitioning. Um, or uh, they just genuinely don't feel like there's any hope. And, like, I, I know a lot of trans people who have had an era where they detransitioned just from, like, not continue to take their medication stuff and whatnot because um they just kind of got depressed like a lot of people don't even talk about this but like it's fairly common I've, I've had a lot of people talk about it to me but like a lot of trans people will just like compare themselves to other trans people like their point in their transition timeline to other people and then say, oh, I haven't gotten as far as I thought I'd get. I ha I'm not as, as well passing as this person. And they'll literally give up and detransition because they're depressed in the same way that somebody who takes like antidepressants or ADHD medication might forget or stop taking their medication because they lose the will to. Um, I don't see a lot of people talking about that, like as large public figures, but I've seen a lot of like trans people talk about it, like sort of as just a thing that happens. So yeah. Not even a thing considered, but that's also a big reason why a lot of trans people nowadays detransition too. So um, it's it's a lot. It's too many. You know, one having this happen to one kid is way too many. It's a lot more than one. Yeah. Look, if you're an adult and you having it happen to one person, okay, kid is is carrying a lot of water here when we're talking about 16 and 17 year olds. Okay, because in order to get like any irreversible gender affirming surgeries, you have to go through like an insane amount of medical like overview and review. So we're talking about 
if you're like 16 or 17 and manage to get like top surgery as a trans dude in America, if you're going through the legal means of the law, I'm pretty sure you would have had to have started at the oldest going to doctors and getting looked over at like 12, maybe 10, maybe younger to be able to get approved for that before turning 18. It's really hard. You want to do that and you understand who you are and what you are and this is how you feel you should progress. You're an adult. This is a free country. You should be able to do whatever you want. But when you're talking about doing that to children, the fact that so many people are on board and so many people children. are angry. If you have, like, people are going to be angry at us that we're. No one's doing this to children. It's very loaded language. We're talking about, like, at the youngest 16 and 17 year olds, and it's extremely rare. Having these conversations. Yeah, they will be. And I, and I also. I, I actually think that, uh, that, that this, shouldn't, this shouldn't be happening to. Here it is. It's a very small number, if that's right. It I'll says, over the last five years, there were at least 4,780 adolescents who started puberty blockers and had a prior gender dysphoria. Puberty blockers fully reversible, by the way. No long-lasting effects. A diagnosis. This says it's kind of undercounted, but that's... That would be a big less undercounting. Less than 1,000 people a year. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I would guess, you know, hundreds of thousands at this, but I could be wrong. I could million be wrong. sounds great. <laughs> yeah, I could be wrong. Yeah, um, the media matters will have a fun with that clip. Yeah, Matt Walsh claims it was. Uh, anyway, that actually did kind of improve my opinion of Joe Rogan a little bit. Him actually holding Matt Walsh to account there, but in hindsight, it wasn't really Joe Rogan that held Matt Walsh to account there. When you think about it, it was. Joe Rogan's co-host, Jamie, or not co-host, but like tech guy, the guy who brings stuff up, you know? Like, hey, bring that up, Jamie. Thank God for that guy. It's, it's amazing he still has his job after how many times he's embarrassed guests and, as you're about to see, Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan brutally fact-checked on his own show for calling Biden mentally done over something said by Trump. Oh, it's so good. I've already seen this, to be clear. But, like... I, I hoped I could say Joe Rogan was, like, just a misled centrist. But when you see the amount of bias here just baring its teeth, I really hope this blatant show of insanely right-wing bias wakes up a substantial amount of the relatively left-leaning people in Joe Rogan's audience and makes them realize the dude is just a piece of shit. I think this has the full clip. I think this might be it, but thank you for linking that. Well, you know, there's people that voted for Biden that are doing it now. Did Zan and, come? Like, I, I'm always what did coming. I do? Right. Like, what did I choose? Like, I, how is this guy? Yeah, you just can't listen to an interview where he's saying some of the stuff he says that just makes no sense at all. It's like you, you can't listen to those interviews and feel like you made a good decision. I, I don't know how you Did could. you hear what he said like yesterday or a couple of days ago? Mm -mm. He said, he was talking about the Revolutionary War. He's like, one of the reasons why we lost the Revolutionary War, one of the problems with the Revolutionary War was they didn't have enough airports. Yeah. <laughs> have you seen that? I saw that. <laughs> like, what that? the hell? Like, pull him. <laughs> it's if, crazy. If, if you were... If you had... Pull him from office. He's not mentally fit. Let's let's watch the rest. If any other job <laughs> and you were talking like that, yeah. they would go, hey, you're done. If you talk like that to a doctor at your yeah. medical exam for to fight, they'd yeah. be like, "Okay, like obviously right. you're not fighting." <laughs> you yeah. would also here's you know eight weeks of of uh, being helped out by a professional. Like, right? You, you might not ever just notice how much shit they're talking about Biden right now. They're digging the hole. Like Biden saying this is such a bad thing, and it proves how mentally unfit he is to be president. Do anything? Again. No, it's yeah. a, it's it's one of the wildest things ever. It's insane. Yeah, and the the media gaslighting you to protect. It's just people are so afraid of Trump being in office. The media gaslighting us because people are so afraid of Trump being in office again. Office and yeah. Republicans being in office. You know, a few moments later, hanging out with the guy, I'm like, man. Well, you know, it's just the media narrative. I mean, so many people were fed this lie that he, the Russia collusion. Yeah. Was this? Was... Dog, the Russia collusion was real. Trump's cohorts went to prison. 
The Russia shit was just real. He had fall guys for it. His lawyers went to prison. I think his lawyer lawyers, lawyer's lawyer went to prison. Like, the, the Russia thing was not a hoax. It was not fake. It was not blown out of proportion. It was not made up. It was not, like, a meme. It was real. Like, convictions and federal sentences to prison for large stints of your lifetime for multiple people involved with Trump that were set up as fall guys because that's what Trump does because he's powerful and wealthy and he has fall guys. They took the blame, but there was objectively collusion with Ru Russia and Trump's campaign they just couldn't prove that Trump knew. They could only prove that Trump's left and right hand guys knew. And they got convicted. Like, it's actually insane that people get away with saying that the, the Russia thing was a hoax. Like, Russia objectively colluded in the election. Not only that, but they were, uh, they were part of the, uh, the hacking, right? Of the uh, Democrats or of uh, Hillary's email servers and stuff. And you can say it's like, a good thing because fuck Hillary leaking the emails is good or whatever. But that shows that Russia had like a distinct uh, uh, motivation to help the Republicans and still does. The Republicans in Russia have mutual interest. The left has just ref like collectively refused to capitalize on this because they think reading documents from court is boring. Reading court documents is boring and it's easier to just like fuck around and jack off on Twitter or whatever, I guess. Like... If you actually read, like, the Mueller report, for example, all that shit's fucking real! It was all real. The Russia shit was real. It just wasn't a hoax. It simply was not. One of these days, we'll go over a video that, like, just goes over the entire Russia thing in hindsight, like a retrospective, and it's just gonna be titled, The Russia Thing Was Real. Oh my fucking God. Or something. Because people really get too far claiming that that was a nothing burger when it was the opposite of a nothing burger. Media narrative. I mean, so many people were fed this lie that he, the Russia collusion. Yeah. Was this, was this the video you're talking about? Let me see what this one says. I don't think it is. What? Oh. By the way, the same stable genius that said the biggest problem we had in the Revolutionary War is we didn't have enough airports. <laughs> Whoa. It was Joe Biden making fun of Trump for saying exactly that. So now that it turns out Joe Biden didn't say that, he was making fun of Trump for saying that. How do Joe Rogan and this guy react after saying Biden should be pulled from office because he's not mentally fit for saying something so weird and dumb? What is, how does that standard carry over to Trump? <laughs> So yeah, that's it. Whoa. Right. Just, what? Just for, for the record. Is that fake? It's not fake, but he was referencing fake? Trump saying that. Here's what Trump saying it in 2019. Oh. Donald Trump said something oh. about that. He didn't say G Jesus. He said a stable genius, and that's where the, oh. the transcription. Let me hear what it says. What did he say? <clears throat> in June of 1775, the Continental Congress created a unified army out of the revolutionary forces encamped around Boston and New York and named after the great George Washington commander-in-chief. The Continental Army suffered a bitter winter of Valley Forge, found glory across the waters of the Delaware, and seized victory from Cornwallis of Yorktown. Our army manned the airport. It ran the ramparts. It took over the airports. It did everything. He, like, he says airports like he's misspeaking, then says ramparts, and then says airports again. Maybe he just forgot about, like, how many types of military installation existed back then. But that is a sign of him not having all, like, being all there mentally, right? Anyway. I think it had to do. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. So he fucked up. <laughs> yeah, he did. But I, I feel like that's it, I just, <laughs> you can yeah. tell too. It sounds like a little different. He's like, you can tell he like messed up his words. But yeah, yeah, he was just, I don't know. To go over the airport. Well, that's the thing funny. about that's but the thing about media these days. It's like right, you, you gotta know. look into it. It's actually wild how clear the bias is. The fact is, we on the left have always known this. Like we've called out the fact that these people are some of the most hypocritical people you can imagine they they aren't very consistent they will criticize biden or obama or hillary for one thing 
or, or Bernie, for one thing. And then Donald Trump will do something 10 times worse, and they will claim it's a hoax. And do you want to know why? It's because of something Donald Trump said that's absolutely true. It's an old quote, some like one that people have just kind of forgotten about, but it's completely true. What he says here is absolutely true. This is from back when Trump was running for president. People, my people are so smart. And you know what else they say about my people? The polls. They say, I have the most loyal people. Did you ever see that? Where I could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody and I wouldn't lose any voters, okay? It's like incredible. <laughs> no, they say, Trump, we love you too, man. Trump's voters are by far, you know, the, uh, I'm at 68, 69%. I'm at 90% total. Like, will you say absolutely? Like, there's just no defending this shit. Not to mention, this dude literally ran on a platform of arresting his political opponent that he was running against if he wins. Like, part of his campaign was, I will arrest my political opponent. And then he didn't do it because there was no grounds to stand on. And, it, it like, you, you, can't, you can't do that unless you've actually managed to successfully commit a coup. And uh, thankfully, that was thwarted. Uh, Jan 6 did not go uh, positively for Trump. Thank God. But yeah, really disappointed in Joe Rogan, which I'm surprised to say considering my, my standards were already pretty low. But it turns out Jamie is the true hero of that podcast. God, I hope that dude keeps his job because he is like the fine line standing between Joe Rogan just spouting literal just insane right-wing nonsense unabated to the largest audience of podcast listeners on the planet um, and, and us having like this very tenuous level of fact checking that his show seems to have, which is at the very least resulted in some pretty good owns, you know, you have to know that like people watch Joe Rogan. People saw that moment where, um, Matt Walsh got corrected and they're probably going to think about the fact that that moment was awkward and drawn out, you know, the same with the Trump thing. I feel like these are missteps that just his own audience are going to be pushed away by. Maybe I'm wrong, though. Who knows? Joe Rogan fans aren't really known for their political, you know, action or caring about politics. So maybe it just won't bother them at the end of the day.